one of my favorite systems here. It's called indirect because the radiators are not in the room. The radiators are suspended like boiler sections inside of ductwork down below. And look at this, we're bringing in 100% cold air and it's wafting up through this hole over the metal and coming out through a decorative grill into the room. Sometimes these grills are in the floor. This was the favorite system of the wealthy people because they didn't want to have the radiators appear in the room. You'd see the radiators in the servant sections, but not in the main areas where the rich people lived. And they were also afraid of the air because after the Civil War, we had, we had a, a problem in America with, a, with, with disease and people didn't fully understand. People didn't understand at all pretty much until Louis Pasteur shows up and, and, and figures out that there are things called germs. But prior to that, they thought it was something in the air that was making us sick, and they, they thought it was vapors coming off of people when people were crowded into a space. And again, this is a time with, with teeming in immigration and crowded cities and poor ventilation. So they thought it was the vapors, uh, what they call vitiated air, where people would breathe out uh, poisons from their bodies and the poisons would accumulate in the room. So the wealthy people that could afford central heating wanted lots of fresh air. So they would bring in this, this cold air from the outside and it would just come up into the room. And there's no return air duct in this building. The return air duct is actually the, uh, the single pane windows. So the, the warm air would come into the building and it would just leak out through the bad windows and, and into the outside. So the windows were your return air duct. So as you can imagine, this was pretty expensive to operate. And oftentimes in, in these old mansions that have this heating system, in, an, in, a, in, a, in the interest of saving fuel, they will close up these outside air inlets and try to make it work just like that. But, but at the same time, they're upgrading the windows and they're sealing up the cracks. And you find out then you've got a heating system that, that won't heat the air because unless the air can move out, the hot air can't move in. So in a case like that, we often have to uh, use the basement stairs as the return air uh, duct work by just replacing the basement door with a louvered door. And now you can have air move from upstairs back downstairs. And we've got to cut some grates into the side of this air inlet here, uh, this, uh, this main <laughs> uh, cold air supply duct to get it to work. Here it is in real life. You can see this one is one pipe steam and it's not working well. There's, there's a lot of rust here from the leaking air vent. But when you're replacing a boiler, You've got to look at this at this and try to figure out what's in there because you, you've got to get a reading and a rating on what's in here. And when, if you can get it open, that's what you're going to see. And there's a good rule of thumb here with this that uh, if this pipe here, this is a one inch return going back, the supply would be bigger. But we look at if it's inch and a quarter pipe going into it, there's going to be 80 square feet of EDR, probably not more than that inside that box. An inch and a half, which you don't normally see bigger than that on these, it's up to 100 square foot of EDR. So that'll give you a good sense of what you're dealing with. If you have further questions on these, you could always go to heatinghelp.com and go into the, uh, into the section that has uh, the heating museum, and it's going to give you a lot of these old ratings. The old books are in there, and, and, uh, and you've got access to it.